we also need conditions for for a okay so first of all the uh, a also has to be continuous in a very similar way so a so continuity of a u and v so continuity of a linear functional let's let's go back to here says that there has to be a constant finite constant for which the value of the linear functional has to be less or equal to the norm oh, so again this is not in xv because l is is l of v is uh, is to a field so so l of v has to be less than uh, the constant times the norm of that function so continuity of this is very similar so a of u and v the the norm of this or absolute value let's let's stick to the real number so absolute value of this is less or equal to c so so there exists a c such that this has to be less or equal to c times the norm of u times the norm of v for all u and v okay now because it's bilinear so we need to multiply so so the so the right right hand side the bound is all, is also bilinear it's also bilinear in, in the sense that uh well, it's not exactly bilinear so so it's the, the right hand side is also a product of its ingredients so if you scale u by a uh, a number by 2 the the bound is also scaled by 2 if you scale v by 2 the bound is also scaled by 2 right okay so the continuity is is easy in order for finite element to be well posed, we also need this coercivity. That's a word I haven't seen anywhere else, but like uh, this is what's called uh, about a, a bilinear functional. So coercivity is that there also exists a number b that is uh, finite. So this is only has to be finite. Right, the b has to be greater, strictly greater than zero, and also finite, such that the other way is true. So, a of u and u. So that means if I plug in the same function on these two linear functionals, uh, on these on these two arguments of the bilinear form, this has to be greater or equal to this b times the norm of u squared okay so if if a w one way to think of a bilinear form is that, that like a is like an infinite dimensional matrix so so a operated on u and v is like u transpose times that infinite dimensional matrix times v right I mean a, a matrix is a bilinear functional a bilinear form in a finite dimensional space finite dimensional linear space you have a matrix a and uh, you have v transpose times a times v you get a number right so so this um, continuity it's is really for finite dimensional matrix continuity is automatically satisfied uh, for any finite dimensional space you don't have the problem about continuity so so but coercivity in a finite dimensional sense is basically saying that the matrix is positive definite right you cannot have uh, you cannot have u transpose a times u being negative or being zero so the matrix has to be full rank and is all, all the uh, all its uh, uh, it's so u times a times u transpose a u has to be always positive All right. So these are the two properties that needs to be satisfied for finite uh, for the weak form to be well posed. And let's look at why under these conditions the weak form is well posed. So well posedness of weak form. Okay. So well postness of the weak form is that if I have a U satisfying 
a of u v equal to l of v for all the v's. Then I can bond this u. I can bond this u because v times the norm of u squared, okay, is less or equal to a of u and u, right? And this can be rewritten as this. It can be rewritten as the norm of u is less or equal to 1 over this b times a u u divided by the norm of u. I'm just splitting the u norm squared into norm of u, norm of u here. But this splitting is interesting because if I substitute this a u u with l of v, and this is because this is because of the uh, u satisfying the weak form, right? If u satisfies the weak form uh, uh, for any v, and that any v also include u itself. So what I'm having is L of u divided by the norm of u. And now what is this? This is like the this is what appears in the definition of the norm of the linear functional. This appears in the definition of this linear functional being bounded be, or being continuous. So this is less or equal to 1 over b times the norm of this L. Right? Now this is, the result is saying that if we have a u that satisfies the weak form, then the norm of the solution is less or equal to the norm of the right-hand side, the linear functional, divided by the coercivity coefficient of the bilinear form. Now it also guarantees, this result also guarantees the, the, the solution is unique. Why is the solution unique? The solution is unique because if I have u1 and u2 satisfying the same weak form a u v equal to l of v for any v so that is satisfied by a1 uh, u1 and u2 then because of bilinearity of a and linearity of v if i subtract these two equations what I get is a of u1 minus u2 of v has to be equal to 0. And 0, if I look at 0 as a linear functional, right? 0 is a linear functional that maps any function to 0. Of course, it's bounded. Of course, it's continuous. And the norm of that 0 function is 0. The norm of that 0 functional is 0. So. So the norm of u1 minus u2 has to be less or equal to 1 over b times the norm of 0, which is 0. That means the norm of u minus, uh, u1 minus u2 has to be 0, which means u1 minus u2 has to be 0, which means u1 is equal to u2. That means the solution is going to be unique. All right. It also tells me if I make a small error in the linear functional L, if I perturb the right-hand side by a small error, factor, the perturbation in the solution can be bounded by the norm of that perturbation on the, on the L. So that's what we mean by, so, so the solution is unique and the solution is stable to perturbations. Oh, the zero map is a linear functional if not a bilinear form. Coercivity is a property of the bilinear form. So, so in order for you to define coercivity, you need a to be a function uh, to be a function of two functions, right? It has to be a bilinear form. So the the continuity can be defined on both bilinear form and linear functional. So so the the zero the zero functional on the right hand side is a, is a linear functional. You can define continuity, but you can't define coercivity. Coercivity is satisfied by this a the uh, the the bilinear form. Yes. Uh, what is definition of L? Uh, definition of L is the, the linear functional in the weak form of the uh, differential equation. Oh, 
yeah, it's the same as L of V out of view. It's it's just a saying that we have defined the norm of this L. L is a map. L is a map from a function space to real numbers, right? So here we define the norm of that map to be the maximum ratio between L of V and the norm of V for any possible V you can choose. That is not non-zero, of course. Right. Yes. Uh, your question is, can I have a very large B? Yes, if I have a large V, uh, if I have a large B, then then uh, even a very large perturbation on the right-hand side would give me a small perturbation on the solution. If I have a small B, then the stability is less, uh, It's I have less stability, right? A small perturbation may make me a large change in the solution. Yeah, that's right. So B really determines the how stable the solution is. Oh, the step from here to here? Okay, uh, this is because of you satisfying the weak form for any V. So if I replace V with U, this is also satisfied, right? So, so U is one of the possibility of any Vs. That means A of U, U is equal to L of U. So A of U, U is equal to L of U. The others are kept the same.